Hi, I'm Janet Wright. We're exploring iNaturalist, and I've got a tip for you on making the most of the iNaturalist resource. This session is about taking plant photos for iNaturalist observations. If you're not already an iNaturalist user or you need a refresher, check out these resources and then I hope you'll come back. In 2019, this enormous fish washed up on the beach in Monterey, California. An iNaturalist took photos, posted it on the iNaturalist site, and within hours, an expert in New Zealand was looking at the fish. She knew it belonged to a group called ocean sunfish or molas, but she wasn't sure what kind it was. So she got back to the observer who took a few more photos and posted those. Her response on iNaturalist was priceless. Holy mola, she said. This was a species called the hoodwinker mola that hadn't been uh, known east of New Zealand and Australia. So this observation extended the range of this fish several thousand miles. This story shows the power of the database and the community in iNaturalist, but it also shows that a lot of the value of iNaturalist depends on good identifications. iNaturalist has a clever way of assuring that an idea of an observation isn't just somebody's guess. When two people on iNaturalist agree on what species an observation is, it gets a little green tag they call research grade. That's a virtual pat on the back that gives you some confidence that your idea is correct. It's a great feeling when your observation gets that research grade tag. So get this, you could be an INAT observer who's the world's most expert botanist, but if you post a photo like this one, nobody's going to second your expert opinion. By the same token, you could be a botanical ignoramus, but if you just post great photos, members of the iNaturalist community can take the reins and make the ID for you. And bingo, there's your research grade tag. So let's head out to the field to see how this applies to plant observations. Suppose we'd like to take a picture of a tree for iNaturalist. That's a big subject, but uh, what we wanted to get is all the features that would be used to identify a tree. Now this one doesn't have any flowers or fruits on it right now. If it did, I want to include those. But since it doesn't, the main things I want to show are the, the overall habit of the tree, what is the shape of the tree, if I can get back far enough to show that. I want to show what the leaves are like, and not just a single leaf, but how the leaves are attached to the branches. I'd like to show an underside and an upper side of a leaf, if I can. And then maybe top it all off by taking a picture of the bark on the trunk. Let's see how that would work out. Good deal. When we posted those three photos, we were able to get a good identification for iNaturalist and also a second, so we got a research grade tag. Most of us love wildflowers, and I'm not going to pass up a beauty like this one. I'm going to get a good shot of the front of the wildflower. But beginners stop there, real observers go for more. If we turn the flower around, there are a lot of important parts for identification on the back side the sepals and the, the stem. We're gonna get a good view of those. Then we're gonna go down the plant and get a nice shot of leaves that shows both the front and the back side and how they attach to the stem. And then if there are any buds or seed capsules, seed pods on the plant, we're gonna be sure that we get those. Ta-da! Success again, a research grade tag. And finally, for a real challenge, let's consider what's, uh, what's involved in making an observation out of a grass or a sedge. The, these are important plants because they're the dominant plants in many of our habitats, grasslands, prairies, marshes, and they're the source of our major food plants. But people tend to overlook them because they're not showy, but they are important and we want them on iNaturalist. They're tricky for a couple of reasons. One is that they're not easy to identify, and the other is that they're hard to photograph. So let's see what we can do to, to get the best result we can out of a grass. First of all, um, if you find a grass that's all leaves and no flower head or seeds, 
I think I'd just pass that by and wait for another time because uh, we really need those flowering parts or seeding parts to identify the, the plant. <clears throat> so let's try to get an overall view of the whole plant with a contrasting background if you can. The problem with photographing skinny plants like this is that your cell phone camera wants to focus on the background. It can't really see these little plants, little stems. And so you think you've got a good photograph and you look at it and what you have is a great uh, focused background and your plant is all fuzzy in the foreground. There's not a lot we can do about that, but we can just sort of replace the background with, uh, with a backdrop. Um, and one way to do that is just with your hand. So to take a close up of the flower head, and we do want to do that, I'll put your hand behind it or some part of your anatomy or a shirt or something so that, uh, so that it, there's no place else for the uh, camera to focus. Then come down and take a close-up view of the leaves, one um, right side up and one upside down so that you can get an idea of whether they're hairy or rough. And look at the stems way down at the bottom because that's often a good clue. In this case, the whole plant is the whole plant is very smooth except for the low stems, which are hairy and rough. Ta-da! If you follow these tips when you take a photo of a plant for iNaturalist, you're more likely to get a good identification from iNaturalist itself or from the community, and you're more likely to learn a lot about the plant as you go.